let me now uh, go and dwell on the cult that I want to talk about tonight. The first thing that I want to talk about tonight is that um, there was an inauguration, there was uh, an ordination that took place where we were wearing some red gowns. Um, it took place, we were wearing some red gowns and everything. Uh, I believe it was on that day that uh, the ordination was just, it was more than just ordination, but it was uh, more of initiation into a covenant with the man. It was more of an initiation into a covenant with the men. You can go on the internet if they haven't, we were wearing red gowns. I was one of those who was wearing the red gowns and we went forward. I believe that was part of the initiation process uh, 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 that was taking place. And I'm going to start by the, by the peace sign. The peace sign that is done every service, in and out, every service. I was also doing the peace sign. I was doing the peace sign as well. The, 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 you know what I'm talking about. The peace sign. If you don't know the peace sign, go on, on, on uh, 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 YouTube. Find the videos where we are doing the peace sign. Now, the peace sign is a satanic symbol which represents a broken cross or the cross of Nero. I want you to uh, uh, get this and note this clearly. It is used in satanic circles as a symbol of rejecting Christ. So anytime the peace sign is done, I see a lot of people coming on the internet, uh, coming to attack me, and afterwards they put the peace sign. Let me explain what the peace sign means. It is a very highly satanic symbol, which represents a broken cross or the cross of Nero. It is used in satanic circles as a symbol of rejecting Christ. Satanists are commonly given crosses and they are advised to use them upside down. People from the satanic kingdom are given crosses and they are advised to use the crosses upside down. After they use the crosses upside down, they are told to break the arms of the cross so that it can form a V sign that is facing down like that. There is actually, uh, I, I would have brought a board to write it down, just to put it out, uh, just to write down so that you can have a clear understanding of what it is, but I'm, go I'm just going to illustrate it. There's a circle, and in that circle, there is a V sign that looks like this. In the circle, there's a V sign that looks like that. There are two arms that are broken, facing down on the side, and then there is, so that is a cross. That is bro a cross with broken arms inside a circle. So... The cross is given to Satanists so that they can turn it upside down, break it like that, break the arms uh, as a sign of rejecting Christ. Now, Satanists are commonly given these crosses and they advise to use them upside down and break the arms of form uh, uh, just to form a V peace sign, a V peace sign. When the cross is broken uh, like that, the arms drop and then they form the peace sign. Okay, so... This is the spiritual implication. This is the spiritual part, uh, the beginning of the sp illustrations of the spiritual things that are happening that everybody has to know so that the next time you are lifting up your hand to do a peace sign where it is a sign of victory, it is a peace sign, you must know that it is a satanic symbol of rejecting Christ and it is highly occultic. It is highly, highly occultic. It is a very highly occultic symbol. And uh, you must know uh, about this. So, uh, to continue on that, uh, it is used upside down, and then the arms are broken to form a VP sign uh, to show their disdain and also to show their disgust for Christ and loyalty to the devil. So, this is done so that uh, loyalty to the devil can be shown and the disgust uh, 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 to Christ can also be shown at the very same time. Okay, uh, just one second. I'm, I'm, I just want to look at something here. Excuse me. Okay, so um, just follow, follow, because I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started um, as I'm talking about the occultic. Occultic, the occultic, and uh, Satanism 
uh, in the church. Satanism is there in the church. Uh, it is happening in the church. It is there. It is not something new. It's something that has uh, existed for years now in the church. So if you see the, 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 the newly opened satanic church in Cape Town, that is nothing. That, that one there, I can actually walk into that place, and uh, if they offer me a seat, I can even walk into that satanic church and sit down, because I know that there's nothing that they can do to me. Because greater is him who is in me than the one who is in there. Whatever that they are doing in that satanic church, it is shallow than what those ones who come out and say we are satanic, they are actually very shallow. Shallower than those who come out, uh, shallower than those who do not come out to profess that they worship the devil. But underground, they worship the devil. And people are made to do certain things uh, in the church that they do not understand. That is not uh, anything that is not uh, 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 constant with the scriptures. It's something that has to be questionable. If you are in a church and you are made to do things that you will never find in the scriptures, you will never find in the Bible, those things have to be questioned. Because whatever that we do as children of God and as Christians, it has to be uh, in alignment with the scriptures. It has to be in alignment with the word of God. Anything that is not in alignment with the word of God is outside the scriptures. It is not part of the scriptures. Anything that you do not find in the... Jesus never did a peace sign. Jesus never did the sign of victory. So why would you come and do things that you do not know simply because there's a man of God who is saying you must do it? That is why from last year I've been saying, stop following the man of God and start following Christ. You tend to start worshipping gods that you do not know. Tonight is, is just a different night altogether and the information I'm giving out, I, I want you to know that I'm... I'm not saying these things to try and make somebody else look bad, but I actually feel very bad as I'm sitting right here. I feel very bad that I was, I was also part of these things. I was also part of, I was also one of the people who was doing this stuff, you know. I was also one of the people who was doing the peace sign with the, with the, with the ignorance of, the Bible said, my people perish because of ignorance. My people perish because of lack of knowledge, you see. So I'm, I'm sitting here right now. But one thing that I know is that if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are left behind. And this is the spiritual backing of everything that I mentioned on Friday. That is why you see that after the faking of miracles and after the whole exposure, you will see that the church, people will still come back to church. I'll, I'll tell you why people will still come back to church even after there's been exposure. I'll tell you why people will still be hooked to the church, even after what I'm saying right now, you will still find yourself going to church and still believing that this person is a man of God, this one is from God, even after everything that I'm saying right here as I'm sitting here. You will still see people coming out to say, um, you know, uh, uh, um, no, he's a man of God, he's a true man of God. I'm going to, I'm going to say it as, as we go, I'm going to reveal it. The more we go, I'll reveal it more and more. So just uh, sit where you are. Uh, uh, sit back, just relax, and know that uh, it is time for it is time for the truth. Okay, so I said anything you don't find in the Bible, this peace sign is not in the Bible. If you don't find it in the Bible, then don't do it. If it is not in alignment with the Scriptures, then don't do it. So as you are doing the peace sign, you are rejecting Christ, and if you are new in that place. You are actually rejecting Christ and declaring mockery against Christ. And as you are declaring mockery against Christ, this is what you are doing. You are actually being initiated into something that you do not know. You are already initiated even before you uh, 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 know that I'm being initiated. Just by rejecting and mocking Christ, you have already been initiated. The, there is the, uh, the, the, the cross. The cross sign, there's the cross sign. The cross sign, you don't find it in the scriptures. You don't find it in the scriptures. It is actually a cross. And on that cross, if you go on the internet, that sign like this, it is actually a sign. If you go on the internet, you Google that sign, it is a sign of danger. Anytime where there's danger, they put out that sign. But it has got a deeper meaning than the sign of danger that you see on the posts out there and everywhere. There's a deeper meaning, deeper than whatever that you will see uh, out there. Okay, so 
the, 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 the sign will be made and you hear them shouting. I, I, I also have pictures on the internet. If you go there, you check them out. I also have pictures as well where I was wearing a long robe. I was doing that sign as well. Anytime something happens in church and then we say it's getting extreme, everybody does this sign. These are worldly stuff, satanic things. These are satanic symbols that are being used in the house of God. Satanic symbols that are being used in the church. Satanic things that have been brought into the house of the Lord. That is why you see, no matter how much you try to expose, no matter how much you try to speak against them, no matter how much you try to speak against these things, the churches will still exist. Why? Because there is a deeper spiritual power that is backing whatever that is done. So the faking of miracles is actually something that, that, uh, that is just done for the sake of uh, bringing people to church, making people have faith. But beyond that, Beyond that is a deeper power, a deeper spiritual power that is actually baking up all those things. So before we talk, uh, so I can say this miracle is fake. This miracle here is not real. This miracle is not real. But there is a power that makes you to see a fake miracle and believe it. There is a power that causes you to see that this is not real and you will still believe it. Why? Because there is a power that is backing it uh, behind. You see so um, I'm calling upon the, the whole world. I'm calling upon the whole world. I'm not just calling upon Africa. I'm not just calling upon South Africa. Whatever that will happen to me after the, I'm done with this whole episode of the cult, the false prophetic and everything, whatever that is going to happen to me, I, I, I'm ready for it. I'm prepared for it. Because I know that uh, my, I, have, I, have, I have liberated God's people. I have liberated the people of God. And people of God have been put at a place where they are at liberty. You see. That is why uh, uh, you see that everybody, including myself, I was saying I'm, I'm in covenant with my father. But when I was saying that, I would just say it without a deeper understanding and a deeper revelation of why am I saying I'm in covenant with this man? For the Bible does not talk about uh, uh, anybody getting into covenant with men. We are not in covenant with men. The Bible in the book of Luke, uh, chapter 22, verse number 20, it says the same way after the supper, he took the cup, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. So everybody, you'll see them coming online. You don't know what you're talking about. Excuse me, you don't know what you're talking about. I, when I say them, I'm saying them because I'm out of it. I'm, I'm out of it. I'm not part of it anymore. I'm free. I'm liberated. I'm, I'm okay. That is why I'm coming also to liberate you. So after this broadcast, I'm going to call upon a moment of prayer to pray for you wherever you are so that God can touch you and God can set you free. And we are going to release lines, even in the coming few days, there will be lines available for you to call and receive prayer of salvation so that you can stand in Christ and be in Christ and not be deceived to be following some satanic things and some occultic stuff without a clear understanding that this is occultic. Okay. So the Bible says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. That's what the Bible says. Hebrews chapter 9 verse number 15 says, For this reason Christ is the mediator of a new covenant. The Bible in the New Testament does not in any scripture say uh, Paul was in covenant with Timothy or Paul was a covenant son of uh, a certain uh, apostle. Timothy was not a covenant son of Paul. We are in covenant with Christ. For it, it was in the blood that on that day when Jesus was having the last supper with his disciples, it was in the blood that he shed through Holy Communion with his disciples. That is, it is in the blood that I'm establishing a new covenant. Amen. There is an old covenant which is from the Old Testament. And there's a new covenant which is in the New Testament that Jesus came to establish. So we are in covenant with Christ. We are not in covenant with any man. So there are people who have actually uh, uh, assigned things to get into covenant. There are leaders, pastors, bishops. Uh, uh, we have signed stuff. They have signed things. They have put their signatures to get into covenant with men of God. To get into covenant with men of God. But they do not know what they are getting themselves into. So anytime you hear them saying. 
Come and put a seed. Come and connect to my altar. I, 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 I want you to understand something. Anytime you hear them say, come and connect to my altar. Come and connect to my altar. Come and connect to my altar. You have heard these statements several times. There is a spiritual exchange that is taking place on that altar. That is why the men of God will continue to be richer and richer and the whole congregation will become poorer and poorer. As I'm saying this right now, it is actually something that is, uh, it, it breaks my heart. The more I talk about these things, the more I, uh, I get deep into these things and, and that is why I, I laid flat and I said, God, I'm, I'm, I'm not ready, I'm, I, I can't. This cup is too heavy for me. I'm not ready. I cannot do this. But God said, just do it for the sake of the people. So I'm not doing this for money. I'm not, nobody has paid me to do anything. I, I'm not that cheap. I'm not doing this for money. Uh, if it was for money, then I was probably going to continue doing what I was doing. Because it was probably giving me more money than whatever I'm getting now. You see, so I'm not doing this for money. I'm not doing this for fame. I was more famous than I am now when I was in the prophetic and miracles and everything. Everybody wanted to, know, wanted to come and see me. Everybody wanted to talk to me. Everybody wanted just to touch my hand. Everybody wanted to be connected to me. I had hundreds of uh, uh, young men and women who used to travel to come and see me. They used to travel from different places just coming to see me, to sit down with me because they all wanted uh, 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 a touch from me. So I cannot abandon that and begin to go a route that is lonely, a route where I know that I'm not going to be with anybody in this route, I'm going to be alone, a route where I'm attacked left, right, and center day in and day, a route where I'm risking my own life for the sake of the liberation of God's people, a route where I'm, 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 I'm coming out and speaking in this manner, a route where I spend the whole week, not even the whole week, but... I spend the past few days, not even the past few days, but this, is, this has been my lifestyle ever since I started preaching this gospel. I spend all the time in my, in my bedroom. I don't go anywhere. I have a team that I stay with. I have a team I stay with around me. I cannot make this up. They know. As I'm speaking today, I was in my room from morning. I only came out from my bedroom today. I only came out from my bedroom around uh, uh, 8.45 or 8.50 to come and sit down on this live broadcast. I've not touched anything to eat. I've not touched anything to drink. I've not touched anything, no food, nothing. Oh Lord, have mercy. Because I'm in my room and I'm questioning God and say, why have you placed this assignment on my shoulder? Why have you given me this thing? Why have you given me this task to speak about these things? Why not somebody else? And God said, you are the right candidate. So, um, as we, as we continue, oh, Jesus. God is going to protect you. He's going to watch over you. He's going to watch over your family. Even if you are not with them, he's going to be with them. It's great that is he that is in you, that he that is in the world. Don't worry, brother. The, the more I, I, get deeper and deeper into these things I I realize that oh. the, the world needs to be very very much alert about what is happening in the, in the world. All the wealth accumulation and, and the expense of uh, souls, it, it, it breaks my heart when I think about it. And for everything that I have personally done, it's, it's not something that I'm proud of. not things that I'm I'm proud of and it's not things that I I, 
I will never forgive myself. God has forgiven you. Don't hold on to the past. In Christ, everything is new, brother. Oh my God. <sighs> it's well. I need to do water. Apologies for that. Is when you're weak, friends, take a break. in the Lord. Let's take a break. When the, when the conscience is dead, one will not understand my pain, and one will not understand that this is not vengeance. This is not. Uh, trying to settle scores or or anything but this is this is God's time and even myself I can't do anything about it I tried to resist it I, I just could not this is, this is God's time and God is doing his things and I am not I'm not proud. I'm not proud of and I take respons responsibility for for all my actions. I might have been involved with different people and different things might have happened but I I take responsibility of all my actions. I take responsibility of uh, everything. And even those that I led in East London, and uh, I led them into doing some of these things that I'm talking about here, it, it was also during my time of ignorance, and it was during my time of uh, not knowing things. And I'll not blame it on anybody, but I'll blame it on myself. And all those who are watching me from East London and other places and all those who've been part of my journey. I say to you all, um, find it in your heart find it in your heart to to forgive me and Let us focus on the truth. Let us focus on the truth. Let's focus on the gospel. The old women and the old men
take responsibility for everything. I'm actually breaking down because there's things that I'm holding in my hands that I have to talk about. And they're very deep. Deeper than what I've said. Deeper than anything that I've ever thought. And I'm, I'm, I'm breaking down and I'm feeling the way I'm feeling because when I'm looking at these things that I'm holding, things that I've been writing the whole day and things that I've been putting down, I don't know what people will say, and, but I believe it's, 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 it's God's time. Can I have water? So, um, I, I, I just pray that everybody will after tonight I know a lot of people will be Backlashes, there will be attacks. But if there are men of God who are standing for the truth and who believe in the truth, and I'm, I'm, I'm calling out to you guys for, for help. In prayer, encouragement, because this journey has made me to lose everybody and the more I preach the more I, I talk I continue to lose more people the more I, even after tonight I know there will be more people that will not talk to me anymore Let me continue. I spoke about the signs that are not scriptural, satanic and occultic signs. And I went on to talk about the, the covenant where we say we are covenant sons, we are covenant daughters. And we have to connect to altars. I, I believe, according to the New Testament, there is no altar that one has to connect to. We all have to connect to Jesus Christ. I, I believe there is no amount of money that I believe there's no amount of money that one can spend trying to connect to an altar of man. It is all in vain. It is, it is all in vain. And <clears throat> the 
Bible says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 15, I'm trying to gather some strength so that I can continue uh, without breaking down or anything. This is, um, this is a symbol that is, uh, sorry. Oh, Jesus. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant. That those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from, from the sins committed under the first covenant. These are the covenants that the Bible is talking about. The first covenant and the second covenant. So you cannot be in covenant with man. It is highly demonic and it is unscriptural. Anytime. So under the satanic cult there are spiritual activities that are done under the satanic cult and the spiritual activities that are done under the satanic cult which is operating in the church that is why it is very dangerous to go around having everybody laying their hands on your head do not allow anybody to lay hands on your head because you don't know what is happening there's what is called a spiritual transfer for according to the scriptures, remember the devil is not an, a creator of anything, but the devil is an imitator of the original. And according to the scriptures, impartation happens by laying on of hands. And according to the dark world and according to the occultic world, anytime you get to a, an occultic church and you have your star, the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 2, there were wise men who came from the east. And as they came from the east, the Bible makes it very clear and it brings, out, it brings it out with so much clarity and precision that they came from the east because they were led by a star, a star that appeared in the sky. Their people were called stargazers. Stargazers who make it a point that they are hunters of stars. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to uh, uh, go deep on that, but I'm, I'm going to uh, try by all means to explain this thing in a way that everybody's going to understand, uh, both on the dark side and on the, on the light side. So, anytime you get to a church, what makes you to be more attractive than anybody else in the church is your star. What makes people to locate you is your star. What makes people to come to you is your star. What makes people to find you and help you is your star. So when you get to a church, there are stars that have been stolen, stars of people that have been stolen, uh, stolen through laying on of hands. That is why you see that everything is fine, but the moment you get to a church, you meet a man of God, he prays for you, everything crumbles, and you lose everything in your life. The star is gone. The star is no more. By the laying on of hands, the star is gone. By shaking of hands, the star is gone. I thank God for coronavirus because by hugging, the star is gone. By talking to somebody like this, and they'll begin to speak in tongues in your presence. They are satanic tongues, and they are satanic tongues. They are not tongues. In the, in the, in the, in the, in the things of God, we have got tongues. In the satanic world, there are incantations. There are enchantments. There are convo uh, invocations to invoke certain things and to invoke certain spirits and to invoke angels. When I'm talking about angels, I'm not talking about white angels. I'm talking about black angels, which are the dark angels operating from the dark side. So as I'm saying now, in the prophetic, there are those who are fake, who don't know, who don't hear from God at all, and there's arrangements and everything. Then there are those who use uh, demonic powers to prophesy. They use the dark angels, and some they use what are called spiritual dwarfs. There are dwarfs that are involved, dwarfs that are used, Jesus. I don't know if I can continue with this broadcast. There are dwarfs that are used for prophecy. 
and uh, they bring the information, they will tell you everything. You can invoke them before you leave your house. You can invoke the spirit that will be giving you information. It's a spirit of divination that will talk to you in the house before you leave and tell you that they so and so you will meet today, they will do this and this and this. Then immediately when you meet, spiritually there's always an exchange. There's nothing from the dark world that is for free. So I've, I've been actually hurting and feeling the pain of those who have been saying, I received a true miracle. I received a real miracle. I received not only in this place I've been talking about, but in other different places. We say, I received a real miracle. But I want you to know that if the source of the place that you go for worship, if it is not a place that is connected to God, and it is an occultic place or a satanic place of worship, and if the man of God is an occultic man of God, I want you to know that... You, you receiving a true miracle, you receive a, a real miracle where something really happened and you saw it happening, you must know that there's been a spiritual transfer. You received a miracle and you lost your glory. You received your miracle and you lost your virtue. Jesus said when the woman with an issue of blood arrived, he looked around and he said, who touched me? Because I felt virtue, I felt power coming out of me just by touching the hem of the garment. Just imagine what happens when an occultic man of God meets you and he prays for you, he touches you, he speaks into your life and something that is really true and something that is real and then afterwards you receive a true miracle. I saw them uh, flooding social media. No, I received a true miracle. It's true. You might have received a true miracle. Yes, we thank God for that. But your glory is gone. Your virtue is gone. Your star is gone. Your star spiritually it is lost because there is an exchange that takes place. Nothing is for free that comes from the devil. You have to pay for it at some point. So this is what happens. There are people who get into these things without knowing and there are those who get into it knowingly there are those who are initiated without knowing and there are those who are initiated knowingly i believe this is not just the i can't finish everything today because i i can't i just can't i just can't uh finish it all today but i'll try by all means to exhaust whatever that i have to exhaust and um, the lord the lord must help me so there is a so somebody enters into a uh, into a legal trade and a legal exchange, a true legal exchange where you are exchanging your virtue and you are exchanging your star, you are exchanging your destiny at the expense of a miracle, or at the expense of a prophetic word, or at the expense of a, prof of a prophecy. So you get what you get and you, you celebrate that I've received a true miracle. And then afterwards, you have lost your glory. You have lost your virtue. That is why you can be in a church for 10 years. And if you remember the first day you got into that church, you were wealthy. Everything was fine. But along the way, you lost it all. Why? Because there has been a spiritual exchange along the way. And the more you connect to the altar, any time you put money on the altar, there is something that is being taken away from you. There is something that is coming out of you. There is something. It is like you are going to, to, to sell yourself to an altar that you don't know. Because you are putting money on the altar. And you are trying to say, I'm connecting with my man of God. Innocently. But in the process of doing that, you are losing your virtue. You are losing your destiny. And you are losing everything that has to do with you. These are not only things that are brought uh, 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 from uh, West Africa, from uh, Congo, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, or anything. But even here in South Africa, there are Sangomas who do that. There are some other South African pastors who have gone to South African Sangomas uh, looking for these things. I, I, I want to I wanna give a strong, strong uh, advice to all my age mates who are in ministry and all the men of God who are in ministry. If you are in a rush, 
to be known in a rush to make it do not just envy whatever you see online don't just envy whatever you see a man of god having you don't know where he sleeps at night for him to have what he has i'll say it again <coughs> you don't know where this man of god sleep at night